What's happening? What's happening? What's going on? How you doing, man? Long man, I'm see. What's going on? You fucked up? A little bit. <laughs> I've been drinking XO all night, man. Came home for some more XO in my cup. You know what I mean? Oh, where were you at? Take, can you tell me or do you have to kill me? Because if you have to kill me, I don't want to know. No, no. We uh, so, you know, good friend of mine, uh, works Southern Wine and Spirits, and uh, invited me out to a uh, Hennessy XO dinner. Um, mm. Four courses, four cocktails, you know. Bunch of shit I can't pronounce. Um, mm. Bunch of shit I ain't know what it was. But it tasted good, though. So, you know, I'm good to go. I want one of those friends. Ask him if he needs any new friends, because I'm open. <laughs> <laughs> friends, man. It was, just, it was a good time. It was a good time for a lot of us that uh, ain't had a chance to connect in a while, to see each other, hang out, build, break some bread, um, you know, met some new cats. So it was, it was a good evening. It was a good evening. Okay. Rub some elbows and shit. You got yeah, you know what I mean? It was XO all night. Henny XO all night. So, you know, anything is possible. Oh, yes. Yeah, my favorite quote. Except not with Henny. It's like with tequila. Long story. What you been <laughs> up to, man? What you been getting into? I, man, I'm just chilling, man. I'm just trying to make it every day of the week. You know, I'm just chilling, being humble, staying, doing what I do. That's all. I ain't been doing Getting ready for next week. Well, the week after. I put it like oh, that. Oh, we'll, we'll get to that. We'll get to that momentarily. Okay. okay. Right. <laughs> Have you checked out that new Batman? Not yet. I'm going uh Wednesday. I'm gonna go Wednesday and see it. Um I was skeptical, right? I'm a big anybody knows me knows like I'm a big comic book nerd, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So like when Ben Affleck became Batman, he fucked it up. Oh uh, yeah, he didn't do a good job about that. So, you know, I, I first of all the Dark Knight series, those three movies are probably the greatest movies ever made. Like wow. like comic book style like it, it it was accurate it it was what we needed to be right mm -hmm. so okay so everything after that been fucked up but i've heard nothing but good things about this batman so i'm really excited to uh check it out see and I, i've had heard majority good things and i've had some people someone says ben wasn't that bad he, oh he was horrible he, fuck ben affleck okay <laughs> horrible. i'm not even a batman fan and i was like only this ain't it the only movie Ben Affleck did a good job in was when he did The Town. Have you seen The Town? Mm -mm. What's it's that about? It's about a crew of guys in Boston. It's a true story. Crew of guys in Boston that were um, bank robbers. Ooh. That is fucking dope. And it's like it's really based on some real guys in Boston that did it. That's the only movie Ben Affleck did a good job because he didn't really have to act. He just had to shoot niggas and do what the fuck he was supposed to do. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. So Affleck is not a good actor. I don't know if y'all been watching Miss Champagne's show before this, but it's about to get all fucked up now. <laughs> yes, give it to me, Josh. I ain't capping, sis. Come on now. I ain't capping. Fuck Ben Affleck, man. Damn. That ain't act. Him and Keanu Reeves are the top. Daredevil was not good. You just showed me how old you are. Daredevil suck. You need to Daredevil watch. Daredevil was not good. That's way more accurate. Fuck Ben Affleck. The new oh, Daredevil was better yeah. than the old Daredevil. Only good day Ben Affleck did was knock Jennifer Lopez. Salute to him for that. I was <laughs> <laughs> oh, they, but Keanu Reeves are the two worst actors ever. Keanu Reeves. You know, he's only good in action movies, and he just oh, plays the same good. role each time. He's not good. He's, he sucks as an actor. He's a horrible actor. <laughs> I mean, I can, you, you can't believe that Keanu could whoop some ass? No. Have you seen him? Did you see him in Hardball? Did you see no. Him in I saw him in John Wick, The Matrix. You ain't like John Wick? Hell no. Nah, it's not my, <gasps> sh my thing. Look. Blasphemy. Look. Keanu Reeves and John Wick, uh, Jason Statham, and uh, the fuck is some stupid movies he made? Transporter? Is that yeah. what he does? And uh, Vin Diesel. The three mm -hmm. of them should have an act off to see who's the worst. <laughs> It almost made me spit out my liquor. Those yeah, top no liquor. actors, they need three more just like them. They can all go in the trash. Fuck them dudes, man. They don't. Yeah. They that sounds like a skit in the making. I make sure I credit you. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that would that would kill me. Okay, so you know, you lying like shit. John, Wick, I mean, yeah, John Wick was dope. I don't fuck no. I don't like. I don't know. I didn't like none of none of it. No, I'm good. <laughs> okay. I'm good. I stand on lines. If you, this is the hill you're going to die on. I don't care. Shit. It ain't the worst thing I've been on. So, 
been on way worse hills and made it through, so I'm good. <laughs> I learned about those hills, sure enough. You were just in D.C., weren't you? Yeah, D.C. was love. D.C. was a lot of love, man. D.C. was dope, man. It's one of my favorite cities, you know, just in, in general. Like, I love D.C., uh, a lot of Chicago vibes in D.C. Um, connected with a lot of my, my old friends I haven't seen in a long time. You know, shout out to my girl, Tiff, drink coach, man. Me and Tiff go back to, like, 2009, so we was able to build and, and kick it and catch up. It was a really good time. Got to meet some new folks, like your girl, Bar me in here. Oh, nice. Tell her, get her shit together. Because she's a star and she needs to... You better to, get your shit together, Barney. She's a star and she needs to fucking sh let everybody know she's a goddamn star. Um, Got to meet up with my girl Chris, even Charismatic Creations. Super dope. Like, it was just really dope to build with a lot of younger, um, you know, up-and-coming bartenders that are, are really going to be making a lot of noise from now into the future, man. It's, it's, it's going to be lit, man. So I'm really excited to see what they all do, man. They They... they they kicked it with us. We we left whatever knowledge and impression you know we got on them, and it was love. Wow. And this was for Black History, or was it just cause? It was Black History. Uh, <laughs> shout out to my girl LP Lauren Paler, who actually is homesick with COVID. Send uh uh -huh. prayers. Um, but she uh she put something together with Focus on Health. If you're not following Focus on Health, go follow Focus on Health after this. Um, she's wanted to put something together with some of the. The new OGs now, you know, Marcel, Vance, Dwayne, Sylvester, Tiff, AJ, you know, just we could just build and, and hang out with the younger younger generation. So it was it was it was a lot of fun. And it was a good way to end Black History Month. It was a really good mm -hmm. one. I love how you come through with the name drops because I just be sitting over here writing like, all right, part me, all right, well, focus on health. I got it. <laughs> like these that like you know, everybody be looking at me, and I be like, nah, y'all ain't got to look at me. I know a lot of other people who are way doper than me. You know what I'm saying? So, like, these are the people I choose to ingratiate myself with. Y'all need to do the same. You know what I mean? Like I said, like, me and Tiff go all the way back, like, 2009, 2010, like, out here grinding. When it wasn't no black bartenders, it wasn't no platforms like yours. It wasn't no, none of this shit. We was just out here trying to make a name for ourselves. So, it's really mm. dope how we're moving like how, you know, I made the shirt with, like, Lynn and Frankie and all them. Like, I remember us being like, oh, shit, they go in their house. Oh, there go Frank, Miss Frankie. Or, yo, that's Colin over there. And we wouldn't really speak to him. But for us to be able to be like, yo, y'all come fuck with us, talk to us, kick it with us, party with us, like, get to know us for real. You know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, like, this industry is cool mm -hmm. and it's dope. But, like, you know, I'm, I'm me with or without these drinks. And whatever I'm putting out into the universe through myself, through Brown and Balance, through whatever, is me. It ain't these fucking drinks. So, like, get to know me. Like, I'm a cool nigga. You are cool. Cool nigga. You come to the bar this weekend, right? So, about that. <laughs> oh, that so, like but, but, only because I got booked for a pretty big event that weekend, so I gotta take this event <laughs> over because I don't have enough contractors. Monday is the, the greatest pool party ever. I know, man, right? We'll see. We'll see what we got going on here. Because I am interested in going. I was going to go with um, with old girl, but uh, I know we got different things going on, so it was just yeah, like, uh, out later. Let, let me know how that goes. Oh, is it real easy? I cussed out last week. I'm going to do it again. <laughs> Leave her alone. I think she's taking a hiatus right now. She's trying to get her I, mental. I cussed out, and now she in her feelings. She be, oh. all, she be all right. She's just being like... I, I text her. I was like, hey, you know, you want to join us tonight? I ain't hear anything. I'm like, you okay? She's sure. being a little light scared right now. I'm going to get her. Don't worry about it. We got it. <laughs> well, tell her I love If you, I know she probably going to watch this sneaking in Lynn. I love you, girl. <laughs> All right. So, black um for Black History Month, Brown and Balance, show the fuck out. Like, you guys highlighted black bartenders every single yep. month, including me. Thank you so much. Of course. What is on the horizon for Women's Month? Are you guys looking at Women, doing anything? I got a plan. We're going to do so last year for um, Women's Month, I did I let women do 24-hour takeovers Ooh. of the Brown and Balance Channel to showcase what they did. It was uh, Chrissy, Charismatic Creations. It was Yoshi, Shout North Carolina, who had a ton of motherfuckers in the 28th this month. Um, Yoshi, Ramona, Verbal Hemi, and my girl, love Ramona to death. And who's the last person? And Christine, Christina, um, from DC, the fit dietitian. All people y'all can follow. Follow Brown and Balance. You can check out 
well, I did last year, last year on, in Women's Month. So I got some stuff like that planned. I don't want to play yet, but there's some, there's some takeovers coming. Um, Brown and Balanced in San Diego will have majority women bartenders. Um, and I got some special for all of them that's happening after Brown and Balance when we uh, get done. With I'm jelly. Gotta take care of the ladies, man. We ain't shit without y'all. So. Oh, thank you. See, you got some ladies out there like, yep, I'm about to fuck him. Like, they really no, are no, she ain't fast. Might have to. Go, I I would appreciate if they want to. I do. I <laughs> I'm good right now. Oh shit! Yeah. So good. I'm I'm, I'm, uh, I'm I'm uh I, I got an entanglement. No, I was playing. I'm playing. Ah, it ain't entanglement, but I'm good right now. Trust and believe that. Good. You don't need no more. I'm good. The, the the one I got, I'm okay with. That's oh, the okay, 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 Mister. Yeah. I'm not gonna ask no question. I'm gonna let you have your private life. Yeah, because I keep my shit private. Don't nobody need to know who it is. But, but if you wanted to share one day, I'm not going to stop you. Huh? I said, but if you wanted to share one day, it's I'm not going to stop you. Right now, but I ain't going to tell you who it is yet. Ooh, okay. I'm going to just keep, I'm going to keep watching. I follow your personal page. I'm going to keep watching. I'm nosy. <laughs> so, you know, I, I'm honest with you. I am a nosy ass chick, okay? <laughs> I just like, I'm not messy because I don't, you know, repeat what I hear. But I'm nosy. It's a big difference, okay? <laughs> Barbie me said she has questions. It, uh oh, Mimi, what's that? First of all, while Mimi got questions, did you do what I told you to do? Mm. Talked about at dinner in DC. Shade. Now let's talk about that. Don't let them talk to you like that, Bar Mimi. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't gotta take that shit. It's Women's History Month. You giving shit today? Yo, she knew to take that shit because it's Women's History Month. She's a fucking star. What people don't know is I met Mimi finally on Sunday when I was in DC. Her son is the coolest little nigga I know. I want to hang out. You know what I'm saying? And on top of that, Mimi's dope. And she got a really dope product. She got Mimi's Lemonade. Y'all need to follow Bar, what is it? Bar, bar me, Mimi. Yeah, bar, 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 whatever. I went to public, <laughs> so I can't spell that good. But y'all need to follow her. And y'all need to get in tune with what she got going on. And I'm waiting on you to let me know, Mimi, while you text me the other day, if you could ship to the crib, because I'm trying to get your stuff at the pier here in Chicago for summer season. Ooh, Mimi, we got to catch you on the show next week. Yeah, Give me my inbox. I'm on one. You know what I mean? I'm trying, to, through. I'm trying to get her in this shot. We trying to do state to state. You know what I mean? Like I used to do in my past life. But we ain't got to talk about that right now. Okay, we'll talk about it later. Yeah. <laughs> so you, we'll talk about you talk, that. We'll talk about it later. You, you talk about <laughs> Bartender's Weekend, right? So, yep. so what's the date? What's going on at Bartender's Weekend? Bartender's Weekend. So I'm going to be honest with you. Don't know what the fuck is going on with bartenders. Mm. Um, I'm gonna keep it a buck. I've never been to a bartender's weekend. I've heard about it for years. Shout out to my brother Chris Patino. If y'all follow NY Cocktail Man and send him some prayers, he's fighting cancer right now. Mm. Um, the founders and and him and Eric Castro are the founders and creators of Bartender's Weekend. It was basically like just a weekend for us to get away, kick it, do some branded shit, and hang out. Um, Lust Life was approached with helping out this year. With that, and of course, Lust Life hit me, said, we need to do a Brown and Balance party at Bartender's Weekend. I said, let's do it. And it's a pool party. Um, it's going to be the greatest pool party ever. 90s West Coast hip hop inspired. Um, if you saw the scene in the NWA movie of EZE's pool party, Wet and Wild pool party, that is the scene we're going for at Brown and Balance pool party this year. Shout out to my brothers. My, my boy Law, uh, a couple of my guys here from Chicago that live in San Diego right now, they put me on, helped me out with the DJ, the chef. I got Chef Josh Cinco. Follow Chef Cinco 314 on Instagram. That's what's providing all the food. So I DJ Cool Breeze on Instagram. That's what's going to be doing the sound. And then your boy is going to be there doing what I do best, hosting. Someone said, it's your first bartender's weekend? It's first bartender's weekend, man. My first bartender's weekend. I arrive in San Diego on the 19th. And I'm lit to the 22nd. Then I got to shoot over to Vegas. Ooh, to wait, wait, wait a minute. You're not just going to roll past Vegas. Like, I'm not going to say nothing. What's in Vegas? You already know it's in Vegas. I posted about it. Uh, I don't know why people think I retain information. I don't. I write everything down. It's What's on, going to Vegas? I was, I've been blessed. 
to be nominated as uh, one of the finalists for Bartender of the Year. Yes! So, so yes! I, I got to be Bartender Weekend on the 22nd, and I'm flying to Vegas that night because the award show is on the 23rd to see if I'm going to, you know, win or not. So shout out to everybody else that's nominated. Shout out to my girl, Lindsay Johnson from Lush Life Productions, who is now also, also nominated for Innovator of the Year. Wow. We worked on together over the years and done. I mean, we outside. Wow, yeah. Great. Like, Rightfully deserved. Oh, Mimi, Mimi knows what was my line in DC. I'm outside. I'll be outside. So Oh my God. And you was just gonna not say nothing about that, huh? You was just gonna yeah. let this whole interview go by. You wasn't gonna flex real quick for us. I don't like flexing, man. Let me tell you something about me. I think I've said it to you before. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Uh anybody, my boy Kyle in here, he know me. Anybody know I'm 42 years old, I'm almost 43. I grew up in the 90s era, you know what I'm saying? Um, and before I got into the industry, you know, there was other things I used to do in life. I'm just going to leave it there, right? You're right, right, right. Um, all the guys I looked up to didn't really, they, they don't flex. And them not flexing kept them out of jail and kept them out of crosshairs of other things, you know what I mean? Let them be, live successful lives. They still did what they had to do. They still helped out. They still... Did all the shit they needed to do and get it done, but they didn't flex. They didn't. They they stay humble, you know. They did what they do, and that's just the way I was brought up. And all the guys I looked up to was like that, so I move like that. I'm 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 I'm, I'm working on not being as humble no more and start talking my shit. But you know, I, I like to stay humble. You know, you, when I'm one of them guys, like you know, I can't let it go to my head too much. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get a little toxic if I do. I don't want. I'm trying to be a better person. I'm not saying be a dickhead about the situation, but like, there's people who's looking up to you. Like, I would love, to, like, that's like, man, I can't wait to do that. Gives me something to work towards one day, you know. So oh, when you say it. that, yeah. Past it though, fuck the award. Work past the award. You know what I'm saying? Like, like just don't get me wrong. Like when the nomination came through, I was surprised. I was shocked. Um, I never got in this industry to win no fucking awards. You know what I'm right. saying? Anybody knows my backstory in this industry. I got an industry saved my life. It basically saved my life and provided for my son, my oldest, because he was this nigga finna be twenty. He was like, Ooh, "You old? I ain't old. Fuck that. I ain't old." <laughs> my little nigga, he he funny. He downstairs got a little girl here at the house kicking out with him. You know what I'm saying? Like he grown, but it was like he was like three, two, three years old, and I was just like, "Man, I can't live the lifestyle I'm living." Mm -hmm. And um. Found this industry, got into it, loved it, you know, started making moves in it. And I just do shit to just do it. You know what I mean? Like, I never I never wanted the accolades. You know what I mean? I never wanted no, I didn't give a fuck about that. Like, the hood loved me. I go walk my block, you know what I mean? My niggas is like, yo, his, my man, he do his thing. Or, you know, I go around my, my family and my big homies, and they be like, yo, he did his thing. He living. He doing what he do. That's all the awards I need. I appreciate all the love I get. Don't get me wrong. Like, I love it. It's dope to get all this love and admiration and all that, man. Thank y'all for it. But like the best way you could thank me and, and, and show me the admiration is pass me up. Do all the shit you want to do. And take my example of you can do it and you can be yourself. You ain't got to form. You don't got to change yourself. That's something we talked about with our friend. I talked about over her the other day. You know what I mean? You don't have to ever, like, you don't got to step and fetch. You don't got to play the game. Fuck playing the game. Mm -hmm. You dig what I'm saying? Like, like, yo, man, fuck that table and begging for a seat at that table. Like, I don't want a small seat at a big table. I'm going to build my own shit. And that's all I've ever tried to do because, again, the way I was raised and the men that taught me how to be a man, you know, good and bad stuff, mm -hmm. that's the way they was. It was like... Yo, you know, fuck trying to be accepted by the masses. Yo, move move the way you want to move, and the success will come. Right. I'm right. starting to get it. Like, trust me. Don't get me wrong now. When I get this goddamn award, I'm going to be an asshole on Instagram. Oh, I'm going to talk my <laughs> shit. <laughs> oh, oh, I get this award. I'm going to talk my shit. Like, it's over. It ain't safe. It's, it's, been, it's been 16, 17 years of, of hard work to get where I'm at. And I'm still not. You feel me? So yeah. I'm going to definitely talk my shit. I'm going I'm to I'm definitely, you know, bask and enjoy it and take all that. But, yeah.
As you should, Josh. Like, <laughs> No There's people who's not doing nearly what you're doing, and they out here flexing hard. And it's like, nigga, I mean, you but, do shit. But the work, see, that's the thing, though. You could do that, but the the work, it's going to come through. You're going to see they ain't on shit. You'll mm -hmm. see. You'll see it. It ain't going to take long. You'll see exactly. it. You know what I mean? I'm me. And, and how do you keep, you know, when we talk about being authentic, how do you keep a hold of your authenticity? Because you work with brands. Like, you're working with brands you've been noticed. So how do you, because it's a balance, how do you keep your authenticity but also work with these brands? I just be myself. You just be yourself. When you get me. You know what you're going to get? Like, I ain't nothing. And if it doesn't, so basically, for young bartenders, this PSA moment, right? For mm -hmm. Boy. And yeah, for you especially. Because you're keep about going, to. Hold on. Keep yeah, going. Bad and shit now. <laughs> Move. You back? Keep going. No, don't, don't. stop, Josh. Keep going. <laughs> no, no, wait for you to get back because I, I need you to, to see this when I say this. Okay. So for all the young bartenders coming up and for all the, the bartenders out here that, you know, they might want a brand job or they might want this and that, do not just work for brands because they offer you some money. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Brands got a ton of money. They're going to offer it to you. They're going to offer you for events, different things. If that brand doesn't align with your personal morals and your personal standards for yourself, just, hey, you know what? Thank you guys for the, for the opportunity, but I, I don't think this really works for me. Another brand will come along that works for, your, for yourself. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. don't be a brand hoe. Don't be that motherfucker that just work with every brand and, and, and every six months you with a new brand, you're doing events with this. this. Because then people going to start looking at you like, well, they just bounce to what's hot. You know what I mean? Oh. So unless you, you want to be just a mercenary and you just bounce around and do that, if that's your, your path, go with it. But if that's not your path and you're looking for a brand home and you're looking for somebody that really is aligned with the way you move and, and your style of bartending and your way of thinking, then you know, be discerning when you try to figure out what brand you work with. Because I've I've worked with brands, but I the brands that I've actually put my name on and signed contracts for, it's been very few. Because mm -hmm. if you don't align with what I'm thinking, or if you just hire me to be the token nigga in the room, and I don't really have no fucking, I can't say anything, I can't do anything. You just, I don't. I, that's not. That's not for me. Right. And so some, you recommend okay. some people be like. They, they look at that, they look at us and they see people like myself and Tiff and other people and they see us working with these different companies and stuff, but they don't realize like, hey, just because a brand offers you a bag don't mean you got to take it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, all money ain't good money. Right. You know what I mean? And and we saw that from 2020 to now, think about it how like black people especially, you know what I'm saying? Brands have been reaching for somebody black. I be the nigga in the room because mm -hmm. I don't want to be the brand that does not have a nigga in the room. You feel me? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Does it? You have to be super discerning. Point blank. This last month, it was crickets. Black History Month. Crickets this year. Wow. Things going back to the status quo. So now, when people reach out to you, you have to be extra discerning and extra critical because you want to make sure they're not exploiting you for your blackness. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Yeah, because they so, will. You know, that's one thing I'll, I'll tell anybody on the come up because you're going to come up, you'll start. I just told somebody this this last week in DC like, you're going to come up, you're going to start winning the winning competition. You're out there and you're on social media. People are going to start reaching out to you because they see you, you got traction. So make sure one is worth your while. You know what I mean? Get your bread. Ain't no negotiation. Price is my price, and yesterday's price is not today's price. You feel me? But get mm. your, you know what I mean? Get your bread, but also make sure that your values and your foundations you can stand on. Because, like, I'll never work for a brand that I don't personally. There's a lot of good shit out here, and there's a lot of shit that I just don't care for out here. I'll never tell y'all online what it is, but, <laughs> you know, but if said brand approaches me that I'm not really, I'm not feeling, Hey, you know what, guys? Thanks for the opportunity. I appreciate you looking out for me. 
I'll never burn the bridge, but it might not align with what I'm doing. Shout out to my brother who just put in Kareem Latif. That's somebody you need to follow. Anybody out here that want brand questions, that need brand shit answered, that's a brother to follow because that's somebody that I look to. When I started working with brands and started doing things and moving around, that's somebody who's, whose knowledge is on point. Hey, Kareem. That's my brother, man. I'm coming to the A soon, too, Kareem. It's so, yeah. Kareem. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Yeah, keep your authenticity. Like, if you can't, I I can look myself in the mirror every day. Yes. And know that the shit my father, God bless, the shit my father taught me, the shit my uncle, God bless, taught me, to my other uncles who got all their obituaries up here on my, on my shit right here, and my homies that I lost, I can look myself in the mirror and know the shit we did coming up that I can stand on my own two feet, look myself in the mirror as a man, and say, you, you good. You know what I mean? It might suck sometimes because you're looking at that bag. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I had to use that three grand. Guess I got to fuck somebody for it now. No, nah, you ain't got to do that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You ain't got to do that either. You know what I mean? But <laughs> it sucks, though, because you be like, fuck, man. Yo, I'm trying to, you know, I'm a sneak ahead, man. I need, I'm trying to buy some kicks. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Do this, that. Man, I can get this little quick 1500 2000 But if it's not something that I feel good about, I don't want that. I don't want it. Right. And do brands come to you or do you see, do you go to them I uh, mean, in the beginning? Now they probably come to you, but in the beginning. Well, every brand opportunity, even still now, they come to me. I don't seek out a brand unless it's a brand that, again, aligns with what I'm thinking. Like, you know what I mean? If it's a brand that I really fuck with, I want to involve them. Anything I'm doing, I'll reach out and say, hey, I'm doing this. Is this something you guys think could work with, you know, with what you guys have on tap? On tap? And then we go from there. But a lot of times brands reach out to me to find out, you know, what it is. Don't ever be that thirsty motherfucker either, though. I knew, mm -hmm. I knew some people I used to see on Facebook and on social media. There's another PSA from your homie. Don't be on about what brands are hiring. Who's doing? You look thirsty as fuck. Don't do that. Okay. The right, the right opportunity will find you in the room. You just have to make sure that you are available and ready for when that opportunity comes. It'll find you. Trust me. Keep putting good shit out there, right? Like you, you yourself, you're doing dope YouTube shit. You got your personality joint. You got your Instagram joint. The opportunities will start to flow in because there are people. Best advice somebody gave me, I was at Tales of the Cocktail in 2010. I didn't know nobody, right? I was on Twitter, and I was on Twitter going crazy. Like, I was talking shit on Twitter. You know how Twitter is. Yeah. Talk crazy, yeah. wild shit. I was at the time my son was young, me and his mom had just split up. Um, and then my other children's mother, we was going through some shit. So I'd be on Twitter venting. Mm, yeah. These bitches, I gotta go child support, fuck all this shit. I was going crazy on that shit because at the time I didn't understand branding, right? Mm -hmm. I was on Twitter as Mr. Mixologist. So what does that do? Bartenders, it comes up. I went to Tales in twenty ten. 2010, I think. And my brother, Big John Eason, not a, and, and a white person. Wasn't even a black person. White person. It's my dog, though. Pulled me to the side. I was at Pig and Punch. It was a Sunday. I was at Pig and Punch. I was a little drunk. But, you know. <laughs> I was a little drunk. But he pulled me to the side. He said, hey, hey, you Mr. Mixologist, right? I said, yeah. But I'm Josh, though. What's up, man? You know, let me meet you for real. I'm Josh. He said, hey, man, look. Um... You mind if I come tell you something? I'm like, what's up? And he was like, well, you don't know me that well. He told me who his Twitter name was. I said, oh, shit, I do know you. You the darn, you the darn Q Rum guy. That's what I said to him. He said, no, I'm the COO of Darn Q Rum. I said, oh. Well, damn. I said, oh, what's up? He's like, hey, man, look, I dig your content. I like the things you do. He said, well, let me tell you something. There's people out in the world that know who you are. You don't know who they are. Mm -hmm. And some of the things you put on the internet, some people will perceive in a certain way, and you'll fuck up your future with what's going on right now. Mm -hmm. Always handed me a big ass flask. It was about a four four liter flask. Had me some Don Q Grand and Aho. We hung out the rest of the weekend, but that one statement just stood out to me. I went home, come home, tells I cleaned up my social media. As soon as I did that, opportunity. Start working for a brand. Literally, almost immediately, because I cleaned up what I said. And that's why I was trying to explain our other friend, 
hey, it's not about what you say. It's not about you not being your authentic self because I'm always going to be Josh. I'm a nigga from Inglewood, Chicago, 5611 South Aberdeen that moved to Harvey, that's back in the city. I'm always going to be that. But it's all in how I do what I do. Right. I have to present myself palatable but real. And a lot of people confuse palatable with they have to switch up and be fake. I ain't right. going to ever be fake. You know what I'm saying? I'm a nigga from Jordans. I'm going to be me. I listen mm -hmm. to trap music, some more weed, do other stuff. We can talk about that. You know what I mean? I have a good time. I go to strip club. I smack ass. I do all of that, right? Ooh, but after I, token, I make myself palatable. Mm -hmm. It's like I'm approachable. Right. That's where you have to define line that you have to do. You do not have to change who you are because I will never change who I am. Absolutely. One for myself is Jay. That, that anybody that know me know like yo this. I pray they don't give me a microphone at the goddamn award show if I win this thing. Not gonna win. If I win this thing, my speech is gonna sound like Suge Knight at ninety four <laughs> I want you to get it now. I Come to death it. row, aka Brown and Balance. Like that's mm. what, you know what I'm saying. Come to death row, but at the same token. I done it in a way where people like they respect what I'm saying because they know it's real. You know what I'm saying? I'm not a character of myself. I'm not a caricature of what a quote unquote black male is. I'm me. You know what I mean? But I'm also me in a way where I'm not hostile toward people, but they know I ain't fucking around either. So that's just something that I love to express to people to say, hey, look, it's a fine line that we have to walk. Don't don't be fake. You know, I ain't no Carlton Banks ass nigga. I ain't gonna never be that. Right. But I also I'm gonna be real, but I'm gonna be real in a way that people can hear me and they don't just look at me like the angry black dude. Because I mm -hmm. am the angry black dude. I am. Forty two years on this earth, almost forty three in a couple of months. And I didn't got shit served to me, you know what I'm saying? Right, right. My whole life. But you're going to hear me, you're going to feel me, but you're also going to know that I'm not playing with you, but I'm not scaring you to the point where you can't receive what I'm saying. Right. That's all. You know what I mean? So that's my little, yeah, that's my little Jay-Z ho. I man. love it here. Josh Davis here dropping jewels. Um, I love what you give because it's something that I write down <laughs> and I take with me. No, seriously, like, I worked in corporate the majority of my adult life. Mm -hmm. So I understand having to, I don't want to say shuck and jive, but that fine balance of yeah. you can be champagne, but don't be all the way champagne in certain scenarios. You know, if I say all the things that I think all the time, you yeah. be like, damn, bitch, what's going on? But, but I can still be me. See, you can. You just have to figure out a way to present it. Like, mm -hmm. I know we ain't supposed to talk about this nigga, but Bill Cosby, right? Everybody black watch the Cosby show. Right. You know what I mean? We all watched college still growing up. Remember the episode when Vanessa brought that nigga Dabney's home? <laughs> right? so remember at the end of the episode when Cliff gave him that scenario and said, hey, look, what's your favorite food? And he's like... Oh, shit. Welcome back. My phone was ringing. My hey, welcome back. Go ahead. What's your favorite food? What's your favorite food? This must be the white man doing this to us. Okay, you back. No, you I'm back. back. Okay, what's right. your favorite food? So, so remember when the nigga was like, when she brought him home, like he was like, what's your favorite food? And he's like, I'm steak and potatoes. I'm a steak and potatoes nigga. So he was like, yeah, steak mm -hmm. for the house, butter, garlic butter on that motherfucker, all that cooked medium is good. He said, but she didn't give it to you on a plate. She went outside, got a garbage can lid, and put that meal on there. It's not as apple. Mm -hmm all in your presentation. You can be as real as you want to be. I say nigga in, in meetings. I say whatever the fuck I want to say in meetings. But when I do it, I do it in a way where people can receive it. Uh-oh, you froze up, Champagne. You there? Did I freeze up? You yeah, did. Was oh. Okay. oh, my bad. <laughs> but yeah, I, I do it in a way where you can receive it. Right? Mm -hmm. I ain't switched up. I'm not going to be nice. But I'm going to do it where I... I see where he's coming from. Right. And why he's the way he is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, why you can't, we can't just scare these motherfuckers no more. No. They're already nervous. 
because they know hospitality was built on black people's backs. Say it again. You know what I'm saying? It's, 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 it's factual. Mm -hmm. Without mm -hmm. us, no hospitality. They ain't, because they ain't know how to do that shit, because who was doing it? Us. So if we were the ones doing it, we have to, it's, it's ours. We have to cultivate the shit, and we have to make our own way. Right, right. I can listen to you talk for all day. Like, why don't you have a TED Talk, my nigga? Like, what, now, what are we doing podcast here? Podcast coming, man. Podcast coming. Ouch. Well, ooh, it's, uh, I'm going to listen right. to that shit. And it's coming. It's uh, it's going to be a mix between Joe Budden, Charlemagne the God, and me. Uh -huh. All wrapped up into one nigga. Ah, damn. Yes. When you get that out, let me know, because I will super support. Yeah, it's going to be a little toxic, but it's going to be good, though. It's going to be <laughs> Be a little, you gotta have a little toxicity in there because sometimes when you say something, that's how that's the easy way to come to the middle, right? Because a lot of times when you say shit, you know, one person on one end, one person on the other end, you say something a little toxic and then they react to it, y'all start to move a little closer together and get some understanding. But that also keeps it interesting, too. Like, if it's just we agree on everything all the damn time, like, who's gonna watch that shit? I, I nobody I agree with all the time. <laughs> people that have to agree with me is my kids. <laughs> you know, I smack kids, so they don't want to have to agree with me. I'm they dead with you. <laughs> so, so you've been in the industry for so long. One of the things I want to, you know, we we talk about that balance, yeah, of authenticity versus, I would say, professionalism versus authenticity. You have to have that fine balance, and sometimes it can wear a lot on your mental. Like, how do you keep yourself motivated to to, to continue? How do you keep yourself mentally uh, ready? For me, it was my kids. So, mm -hmm. you know, when I got into this game, I didn't have no plan B. I had to make this shit work. You know what I mean? So it was my babies. Like, that day, my babies have kept me in this. Like, now they ain't babies no more. They One about to be 20, one mm -hmm. just turned 13, the other one just turned 12. You know what I mean? So it's like, they ain't babies no more, but like, I wanted to show them, especially my son, my boys more than anything, I wanted to show them you can be your own man. You don't have to be the company man. You don't have to, like I said, shuck and jive. You mm -hmm. can be yourself. And once you figure out what you're good at, you know, just cultivate that shit, man, and run with it. You know what I mean? Like, my oldest son wants to get in the business. You know what I told him? You can get in the business, but you're going to learn the other side of the business. I didn't know. See, I hustle. You're going to learn books, and you're going to learn all that. Like, so that's you no know, business administration is his major. So now when, when we get out of here, I can give him the reins to brown the balance and be like, man, take this shit and, and go wherever you want to go with it. So they were my main motivation for me staying straight, me staying in this. I wanted to give up on this on this career <laughs> millions of times. Like mm -hmm. I've thought about walking away from this shit a lot. You know what I mean? But you know, I love hospitality, I love customer service, I love uh mentoring and helping people. I got some really dope ideas for stuff I want to do in the future. You know what I mean? So, yeah, that's it. It's my babies, yo. That's it. That's that's all that kept me going. It wasn't yeah. it. be here right now, for real. Yeah, kids are a really great motivator. Um, yeah. And wanting to, like, survive and pay bills. Great motivators for both of those situations. Yeah, for real. <laughs> they ain't going to stop growing. You know what I mean? Always hungry, they just they a mess, but kept me going, man. My dad, man, God bless. My dad did what he had to do to take care of us. So mm -hmm. my dad did the most selfless act, like he adopted me. I wasn't that ain't my daddy. That ain't the daddy that made me, but that's the daddy that raised me. Yeah. So he did the most selfless act I feel like you could do for anybody. So I gotta go ten times harder for the ones that I actually made. I feel the same way. Same situation. Not the dad that I was biologically made with but the dad who took care of me you know yeah. and he showed me i think if it wasn't for him i would have been more fucked up yeah. than i was growing up but the fact that someone says hey you're not my resp responsibility but i'm gonna take ownership of you like that's big on your self-esteem you know somebody wanted you you know what i'm saying that's that's huge so so what helps you relax i mean you have all this stuff going on you have drugs. What, what, what what do you say drugs yeah <laughs> Nah, well, they are a part of my daily life, but 
um, but it's from the earth. God made it. It has, it's, mm. but it is. But no, I work out. I work out. I'm in the gym every day, getting you know, getting right. Um, I play video games. I go shoot niggas on the video. What you playing? Good, huh? What you playing? I play everything. I play uh, Modern Warfare. I play 2K. I play all that. Anybody want to come get their money took in 2K? It's fifty dollars a game. Um, we get busy, but I play Modern Warfare, shoot niggas. Like, I just I find different. Like, I don't go outside like I used to, which I you know, I'm a little older now, so it's like I like being at home. You know what I mean? Like, ain't really nothing in the streets for me. So, um, I just chill and do my thing at, at the crib. That's it. I host, I barbecue, smoke weed, I barbecue, and play video games and I work out. And that's it. That's it. That's all you need. Shout out to OG, Windy City Chef. My OG just popped in. Hey, Windy City Chef. I'm going yeah. to rewatch this and try to follow everybody who joined us. Because when I do the actual videos, like all the wording down there, it disappears. Yeah, it don't show up. And, you know, I repost the YouTube, so I'm just like, fuck, he said so many things, but I can't remember none of it because I've been drinking. Shout out to my boy Cal. He said the ribs. He's over here Saturday night getting busy on them them slabs I was putting on this weekend. You ain't never made me no ribs. I yeah. feel like there's some racism here. You never came to Chicago. You supposed to come, you supposed to, come to Chicago. I will come because it was last minute. Like, y'all... Y'all act like I don't have a, a kid. I mean, he's a pit bull, but he's a kid nonetheless. Bring the nigga, put him in the car, and bring him with you. He'll be fine. You will let me bring my pit bull? Yeah, Chicago is from Columbus in six hours. It's, I know, right? I do want to come to Chicago. Like, like don't know. bullshit me like this in front yeah. of America right now, because I do want to come. I'll come to Chicago. You just said I used to be I used to be in Columbus and Cleveland and Akron a whole lot, so. Oh, you don't fucked up now, because I know where I'm coming, <laughs> Josh. I'm still to this day. Come on with me, man. So, you know what I mean? You got some homies here in Columbus? Mm-hmm. Are they single? No. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. 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 Yeah, they got they... the again. Yeah, hey, man. Shout out, to my, shout out to my boy Chris. Shout out to my nigga Antonio Pittman. He used to play for Ohio State. Play for Cardinals. That's my brother. You know what I'm saying? So. And my dogs. Dang, you are so how how do you become so well connected? Is it just like people you just you just vibe with and there it is? Or I, I'm just mean. I'm authentic. You can't is either look, I'm one of them niggas, you either gonna love me or you're gonna hate me. And I'm cool with either. You know what I mean? You just like life I've learned life is about relationships. You know what I mean? You, you yes. got gotta cultivate relationships man like perfect example my boy just popped in windy city chef my og me and this nigga greg we met 12 13 14 years ago right mm -hmm. at a bar i was working at 10 years passed by i'm at the bar i'm at now he's one of the owners he's one of his homeboys and this is my man you know what i'm saying so built our relationship that way then we both had so very traumatic, tra a traumatic experience. Like, mm -hmm. I can say it because I know he won't mind. We tell this story to everybody. He was sitting in the bar with me. It was a Wednesday night having a drink. Sitting in the bar with me. All my nigga drinking. Nah, Creek and the IPA. Every rip. So all you gonna drink. Came in the bar. It's Wednesday. It's slow nights. Me and him, we in there politicking, kicking it. He get a phone call. Boom, his pops passed while he's at the bar with me. Right? Gave him a drink. I said, your tab's on me tonight, dog. I got you. Just drink whatever you want. I'm gonna take care of all this shit. Fast forward, my dad passed last year. First mm -hmm. thing I talked to is the same person. Relationships, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, OG, that's my man. Like, we got something way beyond the surface of this industry. I think a lot of times, everybody in this industry, we all you go to camp, run them up, which I know you'll be at this year. Yes. Go to camp, run them up, and you go to all these bar events, and 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 we meet each other all, and, and everybody, oh, that's my sis, that's my bro, but it's surface, you know what I mean? Until y'all really get in tune with each other, you know what I mean? Really learn some shit about each other. Like, yeah, we talking about industry shit because this is your live and that's your platform. But when I meet you in person, I don't want to fucking talk about this. Tell me who Champagne is. You feel what I'm saying? Right. You know what I mean? That's why I feel is important, and that's how I make connections. Like, my best friends that I've met in this industry that I truly consider friends and family, to this day, we've never talked about drinks. Ever. 
you know, we're the only industry where everybody feels like you got to take this shit home and talk about this shit all day long. Mm -hmm. Fuck for nigga, you clock out, that shit over with. Right. You know what I mean? Like, nah, I want to know who you are. Mm -hmm. You were you long before you picked up a jigger and a bottle. Let me know what that is. Also, don't trust people who like they only all their friends is only people they've met in the last 10, 12 years of all these events. I can't yeah. trust. where your day. What? You know what I mean? Like for real. Like where your people at that you met that that, that rock with you. Like my niggas been my niggas for forever since sandbox. When I pull up to an event, hey, hey, you see them 10 niggas, right? They all gotta get in. Mm -hmm. Are they industry? No. But they all got to get in. You feel what I'm saying? Right. Like, I like to know who those people are because those are people that know you the best. Damn. And like, I meet people and I, I'm learning people in this industry. That's who I want to know. I want to know who you are. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And I think that's one thing that's missing in our industry. I feel like those are genuine connections. You know what I mean? Because anybody professionally, we can connect professionally. There's plenty of people professionally I'm connected with, but when it really gets personal is when I really get to know you. You know what I mean? Right. Like I said, we all wouldn't barge in this forever. No, we got a lot going things, a lot of things that we were doing before we came here. A lot of things we're gonna do before, some of us things we're gonna do after this. Right. I, I wanna know who you are. You know what I mean? And I think that's one thing I've always really did. I met a cat tonight. First thing he said, we was in the elevator going up in the restaurant. He said, Yo, I know you, man. I said, Oh no, I'm Josh, what's up? Oh, no, I know you, dog. Like you, and I feel like you, somebody. I, I, I know you. I'm like, no, nah, I'm just Josh, bro. I'm cool. <laughs> you only. And then we sat down. He's like, you brown and balanced, ain't you? I said, yeah, that's me, bro. <laughs> Look at you. But what happened was, I saw how the conversation shifted, mm. right? Because mm. I'm brown and balanced. So, shit, this nigga helped me in my industry. He helped. Mm. Me. And I shifted the conversation right back to, no, nah, let me know about you, fam. Yeah, you got to be careful with people like that. I'm just, But then when we had the conversation and we got the building and really talking, everything was Gucci. That's somebody I want to hang out with, somebody I want to get to know more because we got to know about backgrounds, your fam, my fam, your brothers, my brothers, my sisters. We got to know about that stuff. That's what's important to me because, again, as we all found out in 2020, this industry can take us. It can be gone. Yes. It can literally go away. This is the one job we thought would never go away. But it got, it went away. Those real bonds is what's going to get you through. People like Tiff, people like Kiata, people like uh, that I'm really just super tight with Clyde. And people that I'm really friends with for real, we were able to sustain our relationships. Some people I just had those surface relationships with, it fell off. Yeah. And yeah. it's cool. You know what I mean? It's cool. That's, that, that means you wasn't supposed to move with me to whatever the next stage of my life is going to be. But I really, I'm really, i really focused on developing real relationships with us, especially us black people in this industry, because there's not that many of us. And since we all know each other now, like I'm not going to be on here calling niggas my sister, my bro, and I, if you're not really that. I'm not going to Right, right. I'm, that's not going to happen, Pippin. Like, yeah, I know that nigga, but that's about it. <laughs> <You know what laughs> <laughs> because you know what? Because that's not being authentic. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I know that nigga. They cool. Yeah. Are oh, you sis and bro? That means you a motherfucker been in my house. You know my kids. You know my last name. You, you actually <laughs> know the fuck I am. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, I think that's how you really, how we're going to, in this this new generation, I think that's how we're really going to build these relationships and build the industry to be better. We really need to focus on genuine connections and relationships with each other. I feel that same way. I think it's hard for people, especially in this industry, and they want to move to a certain point to build those relationships because, one, they don't know how to, and, two, they're so focused on where they're trying to get to. It's not always about where you're trying to go. Sometimes you just got to enjoy the journey. You know? Enjoy the journey. We make, we'll do way better working together. Yeah. I, think I definitely preached last week when I was in D.C. I said that um, if we all work together, you can have your own thing. Like, look, you got Cause and Stir, shout out to Alexis. Brown and Balance, shout out to myself. You have uh, Turn the Tables, my nigga Teray. You have Chocolate City Best, Capri and Mike. You have Radical Exchange, um, you know, Ashton and the crew down there. You have so many movements, right? 
But what I really want to express to everybody else is even within those movements, we all can work together. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, everybody has their own stress. Ashley has her strength. I have mine. Lexi has hers. Michael and Capri have both individually and collectively have their. Like we all have our strengths. Right. If we work together and everybody just checks the ego at the door mm -hmm. and we work to our strengths, we'll make the industry that much stronger for you and for the Lindsays and for the Gregs and for the Chrissies and all these other niggas I had on the 28, everybody else. We can make the industry better for them overall because. We're showing y'all that, hey, you can have your own movement, but you can also work with the next person. Right. It don't need to be no division. It don't need to be no, don't even be none of that. We all can come together and make some shit happen. I just got a perfect example today. I had a video call with Tere and Jeffrey with Turntables. Tell the Cocktail hit me up, wanted me to do an event at Tell the Cocktail. All right, cool, I'll do it. I ain't doing shit without Turntables, though. So let me tap my brother's hand. And let me put this proposal together with my brothers, and then we'll all come together. I don't how you do it? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's how you do. It. That's how you bring people up. I don't. I don't sell on nobody else. I'm see. I'm telling y'all what I used to do, but I don't sell on nobody else's corner. You feel me? Mm. Take the corner of mine, or we gonna work together and get the package from the same place, and we gonna make double the money. You watch the wire, right? I do. Remember the co-op? Yeah. Hey, yeah. Shit, Josh Davis dropping gems. Remember the co-op? It was good until a nigga like Marlo came and fucked it up. But yep. it's great. Share, share, like. We all get the bag. Whether we like each other or not, I don't give a fuck. You ain't got to like me. Yes. I, I ain't know you niggas before 10, 12 years ago. I don't care if you like me or not. But we, we all get the bag together. Each other. If we respect each other, we can get this money. Yes. That's what That's always been my thing. I don't have to like you. You ain't got to like me. Just Hell. don't fuck up with my money. We be cool. We just have to respect each other. Look, it's a motherfucker. I said it before. I'm going to say it again. And I, I'm really proud of myself that I'm not as petty as I used to be. This is the first time I realized I'm not as petty as I used to be. I was in, D in D.C. It's a motherfucker I got an issue with. In D.C. I ain't even hit him up this weekend. Because I started texting, like, nigga, I'm in your city. Mm -hmm. Let me holler at you. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> but I didn't do it because you know why? But what? Because what he doesn't know is whatever issue he had with me, and I know what it's, it's about. It was nothing I did, it was some extracurricular shit that a nigga started feeling the way about. And so he had an issue with me. But he doesn't know that I've thrown events his way, I've referred people to him. I don't like that motherfucker, and he don't like me. Mm -hmm. I want to give him five minutes as soon as I see him. But more importantly, I show him enough respect to say, somebody hit me up, yo, I'm in D.C., I got this event, I'm in V.A. Hey, you know what? This the cat you need to holler at in that city. That's what's up, man. I hope y'all taking notes out there, people. In That's Washington. growth. I hope they're taking notes, yes. That's growth, because trust me, the, the, the South Side Chicago dude in me, I want to run the fade. Don't run the fade. I want to run, I the, fade. run the fade. I want to run the fade. I really, really do. But I know that that won't be conducive to what we're trying to build as mm -hmm. black people in this industry. Yes. Because if I run the fade, I'm not the type of person going to put you to the side and run the fade. I'm going to run it wherever we at. We could be at church, bitch, your mama. <laughs> I don't care. Once I see, if I say it's on site, it's on site. You know what I'm saying? But. I'm trying not to be that person anymore. I'm trying to move, moving in love. Mm -hmm. My word of the year this year is accountability. My word of 2022 is accountability. I'm taking accountability of all my actions, things I say, things I do, and everything, every aspect of my life, personal, professional, and otherwise. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And my accountability action with myself was I got to DC and I put my phone away and I did hit this nigga and say, fam, I'm in your city. Where you at? Because if I would have done that and he'd have told me. You going to run up on him? I'd have ran the fade. Oh, I'm glad you didn't run the fade. Yeah. I need you. In my five minutes. We all need you. <laughs> we need you, Josh. You got to yeah. keep it together, my nigga. Y'all, y'all, you, 
Everybody else that was in that 28 I did last month, y'all have all done things and are doing things that people in my generation, the Tiffany's, the Me's, Aaron Joseph's, Gene Samuels, um, all of us, the Eric Bennett's, all of us that we have only dreamed of doing, y'all have taken that shit and ran with it. Super happy and proud to see what y'all are going to do next, for real. Um, and we just want to, we just want to advance it so that, like you said, each generation after us, make it easier, be bigger the better. Yeah, make it easier, be bigger and better. You know, so it's that when we we come together, we do something. That's all I'll be wanting to do. I'll just make it easier for the next person. <laughs> so tell me, tell us, Mr. Josh, how can we follow you? How can we support you? What you got coming up? Give us a little quick rundown. I mean, shit, you follow me, Mr. Mixologist. You know, y'all see it. You follow me at Brown and Balance. I'd rather y'all follow Brown and Balance. We're trying to get that to the 10K so we can get verified. Um, <laughs> by that, we almost there. Um Man, all I got coming up, man, is just, like I said, bartender weekend, this crazy-ass bartender year award ceremony. That's all I got coming up. It's crazy. That's hot. I'm, so, I'm just so, one, I'm, I'm thankful that you came and blessed my show with your presence, because every time you come. This time? Yeah, I'm going to record it. Last time, I just, I just didn't know, and I didn't want to put it up there, and, you know, you're like, don't put that shit up there, you know? Care. I'm I'm the same nigga I was on the last interview. You are, you are, and I'm I'm saucy that I didn't. So um, this drinking. one I'm definitely putting up. Yeah, I've just been drinking XO for the last five hours. That's all. Just just putting your liver to work, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> your liver. Thank you so much. I'm gonna let you go ahead and enjoy your night, you guys. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Definitely follow at, at, at Mr. Mixologist, but more so follow Brown and Balance. Help us get to that next level because if we get there, we all get there. Absolutely. Right? Thank you for watching. If you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe to your girl. Share, like, comment. If you got, if you hate her, just go ahead and drop it because I know you have a lot of shit to say anyway. But I appreciate all of you guys. Thank you so much for joining. Be safe, be sound, be loved. Bye. Peace out.